Hey, how'd Charlie's concert go last night? Thinking of buying him a tennis racket. That good. We had a hell of a chocolate Sunday after. Sarge, you know a guy named Henry Mancuso? I know a Henry Mancuso. He's married to my wife's sister. Probably the same one, since he says he knows you. What is it? Unfortunately, he's a caller. For what? Selling and receiving. Where is he? Interrogation one. Take your time. Dickie, thank God you're here. Stolen property. I promise you, I did not know they were stolen. You were there by accident. You want to hear my side of the story? Sure, Henry. Let me hear it. The latest installment, how forces beyond your control conspired against you. I made a mistake, Dickie. What do you want from me? Tell me what happened. Okay. You remember I went in partners with the Syrians by King's Highway? Not really. They had the discount drug stores. There's a few of your partnerships I might have missed along the way. Well, be that as it may, the store went under due to a sudden flood, which I had nothing to do with. A considerable amount of merchandise with minimal water damage I take out as my share. Now, I say to myself, Henry, you got lemons. Make lemonade. So I get the warehouse. I put in the health and beauty aids, the vitamins, the homeopathics, and an entire line of this aromatherapy with its own display case for which I paid How nothing. close are we to the stolen goods? I'm building up to it. Please. The long and short of it is... I ain't making a go of it with the merchandise I got. Between the jobbers and the big boys, they got a lock. Now, this guy, Verone, comes to me, says he needs storage space for estate sales and someone to open the doors for the deliveries. I got the room, plus I was subletting to him for more than I was paying in rent. Say what you will, Dickie, it was a fiscally sound arrangement. Did you check him out? No. You look what he was bringing in there? Please don't yell at me. I thought maybe I could learn estate sales from him. Get into that line. I see this guy pull up. New caddy, good clothes, lots of cash. I wanted a piece of that, Dickie. All these women Val knows live in houses their husbands bought for them. I wanted to buy my wife a house, too. Maybe have you and your family come by us sometime. That's wrong? I'll talk to the detective and see where it stands. God bless you, Dickie. I got a question nagging to get asked now, Henry. I think I know where you're going. When you were having credit worthiness difficulties, I recall signing a document involving a storage space. Yeah. Fort Hamilton Parkway Storage. Is it that space they're referring to? These events we're discussing occurred? That's the one. My name is Annalise. Is that going to pose a problem for you, Dickie? Oh, God.
One last thing. There's been a substantial increase in the number of weapons taken off the street this month. Now, much as we'd like to attribute this to aggressive policing, narcotics intelligence casts its vote for returnee scumbag Jerome McPhee, working to take back his dope corners. The new player's digging in. Every asshole's packing. Knowledge is power. On our tosses and incidental contacts, let's be conversational with the skills. Okay? That's it. Let's have a safe one. Brother in Lewis Five. Look at the encyclopedia and the persistent stepping on your own joint over a 14 year period. That's my brother in law. You'll be reaching out all day with this, Dicky. Should we hold off on a thing with Zerola? No, no. Francis, we gotta move on this guy. You want me to take the play? Would you? Is he in there? Where else? Yeah. Any interest in fishing, Sergeant? No, Captain. Can't say that I had. I once caught a 56-pound king salmon. 35 minutes to land it. Dislocated a vertebrae, clubbing that sucker senseless. <laughs> Is that so? Evidently, it don't engage your interest. No, I'm not a big fish guy. So, Captain, my office is bugged. Yes. My God. God almighty. How do you know this? The guy I go back with since the academy gave me the heads up. Oh, my God. I'm target of an investigation. Oh, he didn't say that, boss. He said they're looking at the whole precinct. Is it IAB? The U.S. Attorney? My God, was it the FBI? He wouldn't tell me. Just said, we're up. How long have they been looking? He said, since before you got here. Before I got here. So their suspicions predate my arrival. I guess that's right. Not that that's gonna matter. These people cast a wide net. The only other one I mentioned this to... He's Sergeant Santoro. He and I go back a long way. Right. Obviously, I hear anything else, I forward it to you. Meantime, you probably want to be careful about what you say. Not that you got anything to hide. Sergeant. Lieutenant. Your brother-in-law is in some sort of a jackpot. Your name is on the lease of a storage space that he was using as a stash? My brother-in-law is really more of a sad sack than a bad guy, Lieutenant. He's always trying for the big score. He's always coming up short. Yeah, well, obviously Internal Affairs is more interested in your connection, if any. I'd like to take you through exactly what the nature of my dealings vis-a-vis -vis that warehouse were. Well, shall we get that out of the way? Two and a half years ago, Henry says he needs to rent storage space because some other cockamamie deal he was involved in goes belly up and he's getting paid off in water-damaged merchandise. He had several Chapter 11s in his past, so I agreed to put my name on a lease. From that day to this, I have had nothing to do with the space. I've never visited the premises, nor have I received dime one from it. I've got a brother-in-law, too, Sergeant. Ah. Hmm. I also have a pretty good idea of who's a taker and who's not. You're straight as a die. 
I couldn't care less. Your name is on the lease. Units to respond, 1032 dispute, 4th floor, 9729 Bedford Avenue. 7-4 Charlie, we'll handle that central. 7-4 Eddie, we'll back him up central. 10-4. Police, open your door. Oh, you happy, Gil? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I'm glad they're here. Always nice to be wanted. Open the door. What is it? The disturbance report in this apartment. We need to come in. Great, now everybody in the building's gonna know our business. That, that, that pain in the ass, Miss Sherman, downstairs called you. Am I right? You don't want to be worrying about who called us. Yeah, this building's divided between busybodies and criminals. No one was hurt in here. That's not the report we have, and we need to ask some questions. So let's everyone settle down. That lying, dried up bitch gonna make more trouble for Watch me. your language. I'm talking about the woman downstairs. Oh, at least you're thinking for once about somebody else besides yourself, huh? You hear that? All I do is think about somebody else. Everywhere I turn, I got somebody else's. Her, her sister, the life within her sister. You okay, miss? Yeah. I'm so relieved. You are so hateful, Gil. That's enough. <laughs> oh, oh, it's never enough. Nothing is never enough with her. Now shut your mouth. Yeah, yeah, tell me to shut my mouth in front of strangers. Sit down. Someone else giving me orders. My own home. One word more, you're in bracelets. Now, who's related how? She's my sister. He's my husband. Did he put his hands on you? No, I said no. What about you? No. What about the yelling I was hearing? Can I say something? No, you can't. Last night, I told him there's hardly any milk left. He won't go to the store. I said, if you won't go, in the morning, you need to leave what's left for my sister. I come in the kitchen this morning, she's sitting there with a piece of dry toast and a glass of water. Here's Rice Krispies bowls in the sink. Rice Krispies soggy from the milk. Huh? You mind I borrow your gun to blow my brains out for punishment? I had Rice Krispies in my own home with milk I worked to pay for. She needs the milk, Gil. You understand that? She needs it for the calcium. But she needs the milk. She needs the steak. She needs the bed. She needs the chair. Sit down in that chair. You son of a bitch. It's getting loud again. Leave the whole fucking other. My partner and I realize no one in this apartment is happy over having this dispute. Back downstairs, she's happy. It's obvious everyone here is under some stress. But all the time, I'm working 11 hours a day laying carpet. That's a lot of hours. Where's the rest of it? There ain't no rest of it, man. Oh. I ought to be able to have a bowl of cereal in the morning without I having to apologize. I'm sorry, Gil. You've got nothing to apologize for, honey. Four years going after each other don't solve a problem or lower the stress level. Where's the rest of it? He doesn't know. Shut the hell up! Would you be willing to go get milk before you went to work? I was trying to go for milk when the bombardment attack of criticism began. Stay in here, keep the door closed. Name. What's your friend's name? Almost a Yamato Socio. Gonna be alright, Zoro. You ain't hit bad. You think? I'm telling you, ain't nothing. Gonna do yourself a world of good, you help us out. Te mano ahora, papa. Yeah. Alright. What's your friend's name?
police uniform blew one of those scumbags away. Good up there. Yeah, thanks. They killed the boy? Who are you? I live down the hall. Come on in here. You at home this morning? Yeah. I didn't hear nothing. And you didn't see nothing? No. You know the people live there? Just to see him in the hall. Detectives are going to want to talk to you. I didn't see nothing. You're still going to have to come into the station house. They want to talk to all the neighbors. Well, I got to stay here? Then you go back to your apartment. They'll find you. You asked about the boy. He's dead. I'll meet you by the car. I want to look in again downstairs before we leave. All three of them were killed. Who would kill a little boy? The mother and father weren't dealing drugs. Nobody would have killed them. It was just yesterday I saw them playing outside. Did you know the family? No, not really. How'd you know they were dealing drugs? The lowlifes I used to see going up to their apartment all hours of the night. This toilet we're living in. Carly, can I talk to you a second over here? Any other family you could be staying with? My sister's the only family I got. These are numbers you can get me at. I know me being here makes it hard for him, but I just don't know where else to go. Situation gets bad, I want you to call me. Day or night. Thank you. We don't want to have to come back any more than you want us back. It's not going to be necessary. Is it all right I leave the building? Yeah, it's okay now. Let me uh, go get the milk. I was up late last night going over civilian complaints. Not to cast any aspersions on your old captain, but our officers need to be made aware that insensitivity regards minority citizens will not wash with me. Yes, sir. My own time, I'm looking into training methods for alternative means of uh, conflict resolution, just because I think it's so darn important. You never have been one to leave well enough alone, sir. I also think I'm seeing a pattern in the grand larceny auto stats. More about that another time. Jonas is in the house today. Why? My brother-in-law got picked up for receiving stolen goods. My name is Annalise. It would be your problem, in other words. Yes, sir. There's at least some good news. Would you excuse me a minute, please? Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Before I go home tonight, I have to deal with my wife and a sister. I'd like to be able to say at least I tried. If there was any other way it could have gone. Marina, you did what you had to do. It was the right collar. He's an idiot. And I don't want anyone, myself included, getting jammed up trying to protect them. Still, it's a bad spot you're in. This is Verone. He runs a fencing operation. Right. Henry was able to get you him. What would that do? We'd have to talk to the DA's office, but probably it'll let him skate. Could he go in wearing a wire? Can he pull it off? He's going to be willing. I'll talk to him. Once a shot at staying out of jail, he's got to be willing. Reverend Mathis, the beaten soul of our community. Officer Johnson, what do we know? 
We know one shooter's dead, the other's at large. Did anyone come forward? Not yet. Speak to neighbors, people who knew the family? Reverend, please, don't give me a checklist how to do my job. What kind of inducements are you providing? Inducements? Yeah, we're working on a trip to Disneyland. Witness protection program, cash rewards? So far, we don't have anyone who said they saw anything. And until they're made to feel safe, that will continue to be the case. Once there's a witness we feel can help us, we'll do everything we can to make them feel safe. That witness is not going to just show up on your doorstep. He has to be encouraged to come forward. He has to be assured that there is at least as much interest in apprehending the murderer of a black family as there is a corrupt union official or a mafia bookmaker. You think this family being black means I'm not interested in clearing this case? I'll get started on the paperwork. I think when it comes to black-on-black -black violence, people are all too ready to shake their heads and accept it. Because seeing a child shot to death does nothing to me. It's only you it affects. I'm not interested you're affected, officer. I'm interested you're going to do something about it. You want me to roll up on drug corners? Randomly beat the crap out of people? You want to rain a terror out there? No, I don't. No, because if we did that, you'd be out there with a bullhorn calling for us to be locked up. Oh, so I have two choices. A police state where black people are indiscriminately brutalized or a state of anarchy where the murderer of a child goes free. Who's this for, Reverend? Who's what for? This visit, this speech, just sticking your chest out like that's what it takes for us to do our job. It helps your image where it gets back you and cops' faces. I'm sorry your cynicism causes you to question my motives. And I'm sorry you're thinking you're the only black man on this street with principles cause you to question how I do my job. Probably best I direct my inquiries to someone else. Presenting my client for questioning, Sergeant, as requested. Clever. You want to take these two upstairs? Let the record reflect that my client is here of his own accord. Let the record reflect if he wasn't here, we'd have violated his parole. Simple acknowledgement out of the question. Mr. Mason. Sarge. Frankie, take the desk. All right. I should warn you, I have a perspiration problem. You worried about getting electrocuted? I'm just saying, I sweat through a shirt. I sweat through a sport coat. Summertime, I change my clothes two, three times a day. I'm home, and that's with nothing to worry about. The wires are fine, Henry. You can sweat all you want. Nothing's going to happen. Go through it again. Face them. Sit close to the table. Steer the conversation towards stolen property, but try not to make him feel like he's on the witness stand. Good. Get him to be as specific as I can without arousing his suspicion. Get him to talk, it's obvious he's the boss. Once he does that, in comes the cavalry, book him, Dan or murder one. We'd rather make the arrest after we listen to the tape. Oh, right. You get in any trouble, they're gonna come right in. Trouble, you mean he figures out what I'm doing? We'll have a detective in the restaurant. Detective Mikado and myself will be in a van parked right outside. We got a code word in case he gets me. Ballpoint pen. You understand that, Henry? How that works? Yeah, I say ballpoint pen. They come in, introduce Verone to Mr. Smith and Mr. Wesson. You keep in mind, you say it. We're coming in. Do not say it unless you need to say it. Which I won't. He's not going to figure out I'm undercover. As far as he's concerned, I'm just a schmuck with a warehouse. Just keep it conversational and you'll be fine. I'm not the least bit worried. I bluff my way through many a hand holding nothing. Put me in. I'll deliver. You do that and you're off the hook. It's done. Oh, by the way, Dickie, just out of curiosity, where are you going to be? It's all right. I'll come along. Sure. Not necessary. I'll be in a van with them. We're going to check the equipment. Good. Thanks. You sure you're all right to do this thing? Lock and load, brother. You came through for me. I'm going to come through for you. All right. I got to let him know I'm going to be out of the house. I'm ready to go whenever. Ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen. <clears throat> Ballpoint pen. Melvin Weeks, Sharice Weeks, 
They're on weeks. They're all dead, Jerome. Terrible tragedy. Any idea how it happened? Not a clue. Did you know these people? No. Did you know he was dealing? How would he know that? He's been locked up for the past seven years. Where were you? Nine o'clock this morning, Jerome. I was meeting with my parole officer. So you have no knowledge who ordered this? Gentlemen, he told you he has no knowledge of it. He told you his whereabouts. Unless you're prepared to place him under arrest, I'm going to say that we have fulfilled our obligation to provide you with an account of Mr. McPhee's whereabouts. And if there's nothing else related to that, we're done. Jerome? You plan on learning the trade, Jerome? Why do you ask? Because you ain't making no money the way you've been. My plan's are to go back and finish my education. You think you're talking to a rookie? Are you placing my client under arrest? It's only a matter of time. I know where you live. I know where you hang out. Every time I see you get in the car, I'm going to pull it over. Every time I see you talking to somebody, I'm going to make it my business to find out who it is. You're not going to be able to drink a can of beer on the stoop without I'm all over you. Sounds like harassment, Officer Johnson. You don't need directions how to file a civilian complaint. We got to stand here. No. We don't. Good afternoon, Reverend. Counselor. Everything all right? Checking on where things stand with the murder of this family. Good. Cops need you to keep their feet to the fire. And what brings you here? I'm here with my client. You know anything? For some reason you don't address me directly, Reverend. You know anything? No, I don't. Yeah, if something happens concerns dope, I find that hard to believe. This man has paid his debt to society with regard to any drug offenses he may have committed? Because, uh... You'd have nothing to do with him if it was otherwise. You are not going to restore your credibility by turning on brothers who are innocent. I'll keep you current with the investigation, Reverend. Come on, Jerome. Some frustrated people here. Mr. Mason. Able to recall anything might be helpful? It ain't a matter of recall. I didn't see nothing. If you did, you'd say so. Yes, I would. You wouldn't let a man murder as an eight-year-old boy go free. You knew anything at all that might serve to apprehend a person like that. You would stand up and say so. Yes, I would. Yeah. And I would stand with you. Excuse me, Reverend, I got to get back to work. This breaks up your whole day. It's all right. I hate him always on the receiving end. Dad yeah, will pick you up out front. You go separate? I go in a van. I run out of the house this morning. Let me see, I got cash. Yeah. Hope this isn't coming out of your pocket. Good luck, Henry. You're a prince. There's a surveillance van outside. Has to do with my brother-in-law's matter. I work narcotics, Sergeant. I know a surveillance van when I see one. Sir, it is a surveillance van. Parked outside, plain view. They're sending me a signal. It's here for a meet between my brother-in-law and his fence. Sergeant, need to know basis only. We're in a fifth column situation. Let's act accordingly. How you doing, Sarge? A little glum. What's going on? I decided it would be best I move out. Something happened? It was a bad situation. My being there only made it worse. You got some place you can go? A shelter? Don't do that. I thought I'd get from you which one would be safest. You're not going to feel safe in any of them. Yes, I will. I'll be fine. 
There's a motel by Kennedy Airport. The manager owes me a few favors. I'll call him. You can go there till you figure out something more permanent. That's very nice of you. No problem. Can I also ask if you would look in on my sister? Sure. Something's fallen into my lap. Might be of interest. Go ahead. Two guys I know boosted 35 Sony big screens. They want to move them fast. Not a bad way to go. That's good. Why would that be of interest to me? Because you buy stolen goods. I what? What'd you get for those stolen camcorders went out of there last week? What's with all the stolen? I forgot your interstate sales. That gross of stolen tube socks I got sitting there. They're from the estate of uh, Dr. Scholes. He's not on a witness stand, Henry. Sorry, she's doing fine. Who are these guys with the TV sets? Believe me, they're more dependable than that wacko Carl dropped off the VCRs he stole out of the school for the death. I didn't know he stole them out of the school for the death. Where'd you think he stole them from? A regular school. That's it, we got him. How many people you got working for you? What are you, my accountant? Probably enough to keep the swag in different locations. You take a hit, it ain't that heavy. On the other hand, you probably got enough backing, you don't even worry about it. Which one of the five families is it you're with? Whoa, what are you talking about, families? Volume of stolen goods you're receiving, you gotta be hooked up. He's gonna make them. Why are you sweating so much all of a sudden, Henry? I'm not sweating. We gotta go in. He knows the help word, Sarge. Your business is limited to stolen goods? Or you're involved in other areas as well? Like what kind of areas? Bookmaking, narcotics, prostitution. I'm going in. You do what you want. Hey, 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 hey! My surgeons don't operate on their relatives. You some kind of rat, Henry? What are you talking about? Huh? You wearing a wire? You wouldn't happen to have a ballpoint pen, would you? Where is it? I'm looking all over here for a ballpoint pen. Where is it? Does the waiter have a ballpoint pen? I'm gonna stab you right in the heart, you miserable bastard. Ball all right, keep your hands where I can see. You gotta figure somebody tipped them off, no? And here. I want to make something clear, Officer Johnson. This shooting grew out of a dispute with which Jerome McPhee was in no way involved. He was outraged by this morning's events. He let his outrage be known. People came to him with information. I'll bring you upstairs. You can give the information to the squad. And he'd prefer I give it to you. Why would that be? I didn't ask. You want the information? Sure. His name's Ruben Diaz. He can be found at the apartment of his girlfriend, Patrice Toulon, at 7531 Schenectady Avenue. What's going to tie Ruben Diaz to the murders? Cedric Mason lives in the apartment next door. He saw him leaving. Cedric Mason said he didn't see anything. Well, that was until Mr. McPhee assured him that his personal safety wouldn't be an issue. You could get a gold shield out of this, Officer Johnson. That's why McPhee told you to give this to me? So McPhee thinks he owns me? As I said, I don't ask questions I don't feel are pertinent to the matter at hand. Here's how it's going to work. We'll pick up Diaz. We'll see if he checks out. As far as the official version why Mason's willing to ID him, it's because of the Reverend. <laughs> what did the Reverend do? He spoke to Mason. He made him see the light. That's important. Right. Always nice to see a brother getting somewhere in the world, Officer Johnson. Anywhere I get it ain't gonna be in Jerome McPhee's pocket. Or dealing with a scumbag shyster that don't think he's dirty because he don't ask too many questions. Sergeant Santoro, did uh, operation go well? Yes, sir. 
Glad to hear it. You have a minute? I have some thoughts re the facilities and uh, their impact on the morale of our officers. Let me walk you through the physical plant and show you what I'm referring to. Sergeant Donovan, if I could have your input in this matter as well. I'll meet you by the desk. We're walking through the physical plant. I don't know what I stepped in coming to this hell hole, but this isn't going to work. We still don't know where it's coming from. And it makes no difference where it's coming from. I called my rabbi at the building. He's working on something for me. What I need is you guys to watch my back until it comes through. Sure, boss. Whatever we can do. Any hint of uh, corruption, anything that can make problems for me, I need you to deflect and contain. I can't have no bogeys coming in at me from 9 o'clock. We hate to see you go, boss. I appreciate that. And I want to say that I have the utmost respect for the two of you. Problem is, a place like this, a captain has two strikes on him going in. They make it so you can't do your job even when you want to. Any idea where you're going to wind up? <clears throat> well, this isn't definite. So please, don't say anything about it. I got a shot at going to building maintenance. Perfect. No precinct to run, no cops to worry about. No pain in the ass special interest groups to answer to. I'm going to have carpenters and plumbers under my command, and that's just fine with me. I ain't going to make a deputy inspector. So be it. I'm also not going to wind up in jail or the Scrabble champion at Pilgrim State Mental Hospital. <laughs> Checking the plumbing. Yes, sir. Checking the plumbing in the entire house. Sarge, we liked this guy for the multiple homicides this morning. Good work. We'll get him up to squad. I'll meet you up there. I heard there was an arrest. Mr. Mason was apparently affected by what you said. Came back in and gave us a description and agreed to testify in court. Affected by what I said? That's right. It had nothing to do with McPhee? Absolutely not. I uh, appreciate that's what you're saying. That's what it was. Officer Johnson, I am a practical man. Whatever does us the most good and McPhee the least good, let that be the story. This time. The neighbor heard more beefing. Where to see what's doing? How'd the lamp get broken? I knocked it over. How'd it happen? Your face is red. He hit you in the face? No. Is that no? Because if he did, it's a must arrest, or no, because he really didn't hit you. Anybody interested in what I take off her and her sister, the, the, the Virgin Mary, Miss Delicate, knocked up, I don't want to impose? Not no more, right, Gil? Because you got her sister out on the street. That was Carly's choice. Getting hit. Was that Bonnie's choice? You know what, Gil? Let's take a little ride. Well, I said he didn't hit me. We're just going to talk to him. Where are we going? Don't let it worry you. I said let's go. What I got from him, he goes away three to five. I can't believe you did this without saying anything to me. Right, Dickie? Something like three to five, right? I didn't have a chance to tell you. Situation presented itself, we had to move. You must have been so scared. You don't have time to be scared. Help me set the table. Sure. So, what now? In what sense? 
in the sense of gainful employment, Henry. I can't hold on to the warehouse. Maybe I hook up with my friend Richie has an electronics store or my brother-in-law, Victor. Any felonies involved? These guys are legit, 100%. Dicky, any chance at all I could work in law enforcement? None. None what? None chance that there's not going to be recognition the job Henry did. Really? And maybe you should be a cop, Henry. Type works not for me, honey. But it's good to be wanted. <laughs> Go call the kids, Sonny. Tell them dinner's ready. Get out, Gil. What are we doing? Get out of the car. Come here. Empty out your pockets. What's going on? Empty your pockets. And uh, take off your shoes. <sighs> Look, I don't need to take no beating here. Only way you take a beating is if you don't get those shoes off your feet. You're gonna walk home now, Gil. Walk? We're across town. Shut up and listen to him. Your shoes and your wallet will be at your building. They'll be in a bag under your front stoop. <laughs> you guys get off bullying people? That's a good one. You're who's been bullying, Gil. And on this walk, you have to come to an understanding. No one believed your wife's story you didn't slap her. Me and Phil are going out on a limb, giving you a last chance, realizing However tough the situation is, with you doing your best, bringing a paycheck home, and maybe not feeling appreciated, or getting enough space in the household, or consideration, you cannot raise a hand. You raise a hand again, Gil, and I promise you, you are going to jail, and your entire life is going to change. All right. Can I have my shoes and stuff back now? No, because you can't just say it. All this time you're walking, and however uncomfortable, or maybe embarrassed, keep coming back in your mind. I'm trying to make a life, and so is Bonnie. And it's not the Wheel of Fortune, but it ain't that bad. I'm not locked up, and my wife and some people on the beat respect I'm trying to make a go. That you gave your sister-in-law a roof and food. That's why we're going against the must-arrest regulation, Gil. Her leaving this afternoon, that was on her. I absolutely said she could stay. She knew she was making things rough on you and her sister. She's expecting. I never said she couldn't stay with us. I... I could probably tell her that, find a better way of saying it. Here's something to think about. I, I gotta walk across the borough? The bag will be under your stoop. Yeah. All right. Good night. Yeah, all right. I think you've got the sister-in-law back in the apartment. Yeah, that'd be nice. 